Hello and welcome to Midweek Moment here at First Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, in Mount Carmel, Illinois. We have just celebrated the Christian holiday of Easter, which chronicles the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his reconciliation with God the Father, his Father. There is a tract that has been circulating anonymously on Facebook and elsewhere that is a graphic and powerful portrayal of the last three days of Jesus' life and what humankind did to God's Son in His name that saved us all. The author and the time of its writing are unknown. And I know that because I searched for its origin for two days online without result. But it is so powerful that it is appropriate to share here. One of my congregants introduced me to this tract, and I thank her for it. It is titled, Hidden in the Healer. I caution you that it is pretty graphic and I leave it to your discretion if you have small children with you who might be adversely affected by the story. He received 39 stripes because 40 was known to kill a man. They wanted him alive. They held handfuls of his hair and beard and pulled it out by the roots. They wanted him alive. They kicked, punched, and spit on him for hours until there wasn't a single spot on his body not covered in blood. They wanted him alive. They shoved a crown of thorns down on his head so harshly it stuck to his skin. They wanted him alive. After hours of being beaten, mocked, whipped, flogged, and tortured, they made him walk with a cross. They made him carry it, a rough piece of wood with splinters digging into those fresh wounds. They wanted him alive. They wanted him to feel every ounce of pain they could bring. He had to feel it in, his, in order to heal us. Crucifixion was historically one of the cruelest, most tortured deaths a human could face. Hours upon hours of torture Torture most of us cannot mentally think of because the cruelty isn't normal. It isn't something our minds can comprehend. We celebrate Easter with pastel colors, happy children hunting Easter eggs, and chocolate. Truth is, there was absolutely nothing happy about the day Jesus died. It was cruel, bloody, and nasty. He could have stopped all of it. He could have called every angel in heaven to demolish every person standing and shouting, Crucify him! He didn't. He knew in order to have a Sunday, you have to have a Friday. He knew in order to have joy, you have to have and carry your own cross. He felt everything that day. He felt how your heart broke, wide open when you had to watch your baby die. He felt how heavy your life was when you were star staring down the barrel of a gun, wondering if the man you called husband was going to shoot you. He carried the weight of the burden you have felt since your spouse died, and life just doesn't seem right since. On that cross, he held the rapist, the murderers, the sinner, and the saint. He leveled every playing field and said, All of you are worth it. He knew he had to carry the cross. He never promised the cross to carry in this life would not be heavy. His wasn't. His promise is that Sunday is coming, no matter how heavy Friday is. Financially, emotionally, mentally, or physically, Friday is heavy. That cross is weighing you down, and you are about to crumble under its weight. 
His promise was simply this. He won't make you carry it alone. What kind of king would step down from his throne for this? Jesus of Nazareth, the Son of God, did. For you, he did every bit of it. For you and for me, oh yes, it is heavy. So heavy sometimes you do not think you can take one more step. But look up, because Sunday is coming. Let us pray as Jesus did for all believers in John 17, 20 through 26. Dear Father, my prayer is not for them, my apostles, alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, may be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those who have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, through the world, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Amen and amen.